Okay, here's a decision. Sebastian's telling me about the fireworks, and I can't help but notice that he dies on every single ending I've seen. So if I tell him to go watch the fireworks, will that affect? Will he go and see the fireworks and not get killed? Let's try that. Are you suggesting I abandon my post during the fireworks? I am, because otherwise you die. No, you don't have to abandon your post, but if you pick a good spot and watch them for like half an hour or so, no one's going to care. I'm not so sure about that. The guard post is pretty important. I know we're talking about the portal, but you don't need to take this so seriously all the time. Think about it. The portal's broken right now anyway, and everybody will be busy watching the fireworks. Nothing's going to happen. Don't go to the portal. You got a point. Just pick a good spot, and no one's going to even notice you're gone. Well, if you say so. Anyways, I should get back to the investigation now. I'll leave the stuff for you here, and I'll take care of the rest once I get back. Sure, good luck. Hopefully, that that helps. Here we go, chapter 5. Let's go ahead and see what's happened. Hopefully, things will be slightly different this time. Okay, so we've got our ending options. We've got Lorem, so is it going to be the good one or the bad one? I've been fairly good to him, so hopefully we'll get the good ending. After a few minutes of walking, I arrived at a rather empty looking area near the edge of town. Yo Lorem, what's up? Yo, yo, yo. You were right. This would be much better than mingling with the crowds. I can do without all the extra noise and screaming. Yes. What are we going to do now? Wait. <laughs> I think it's starting. Have a look. We were quiet as we waited and the stillness of the night enveloped us. Soon, I heard the sound of the first rocket making its way into the sky, after which it exploded into a pattern of colours. More rockets followed, their thunderous noise echoing through the land. There's them fireworks. Okay. Fireworks going on. Suddenly, a terrible realisation hit me. Considering how public of an event this was, and how I was told multiple times that everyone would be watching the fireworks, now would be the best time for Reza to do anything that he planned to do. Not only was the village basically deserted, but the sounds of the fireworks would also overshadow any gunshots, giving him as much security as he would ever have. As the portal had been repaired by the mysterious person I met, now was the perfect time for Reza to make his getaway, and I was the only one who knew about it. Lorem, we gotta go. Now, mate. What's going on? I know where Reza is. Really? We gotta stop him. We? What do you think I can do? He's twice as big as I am. And let's not forget about his weapon. I can try to hold him off. Go get help. Okay. Where is he anyway? The underground building. Let's go. Move, move, move. I arrived at the portal just a few minutes later. I couldn't help but be glad that it was still turned off and didn't appear to have been used recently, but it meant Reza was still here somewhere. I looked around, thinking about where he could be, or if it was worth waiting for him here when I saw something out of the corner of my eye. There was a suitcase leaning against the portal. This is new. When I opened it to check on its contents, I was surprised to find a few eggs inside. I had no doubt that this was Reza's doing. Apparently he had broken into the hatchery again, stashing the eggs here, but he hadn't used the portal yet. Why? Given that he hadn't left yet, he clearly still had unfinished business in the area. The underground building. The administrator told me about the prowess of the generators within. It probably hadn't been hard for Reza to guess the same, or to try stealing them from a place he knew would be even more deserted than the rest of the village was right now. He also didn't have far to go from the portal. All things considered, it was the only option that made sense to me. I could have waited for Reza here, but in the end, I decided it would be better to meet him underground. If there was going to be a confrontation, I was sure that it would be an advantage to be in a more crowded space. Even in the darkness, it was easy for me to spot the site where they had unearthed the building's entry, as it was roped off, and I'd seen it before. Okay, let's just go inside. But Sebastian's not dead! That's the best bit! When I entered the building, I was met by a long, illuminated hallway that was lined with doors on both sides. Since the lights were already on, Reza had to be very close. I wasn't surprised at the building still having electricity, since its generators were also powering the portal. Suddenly, one of the doors opened and out came Reza, carrying a large cardboard box. He spotted me and put it on the ground. Yo, 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 what's up? 
You don't know how glad I am to see you. I wanted to talk with you for so long. I tried to contact you, but I couldn't because someone was telling you the whole time. Talking can wait. Now you're here. We've got everything. Let's go. Let's go. No, mate. No, what are you talking about? I ain't doing nothing until you answer a few questions. Okay, fine. we got some time. No one's going to disturb us here. We could even get the backup generator as well after we send this one over. Okay, when did you realise we were in the past? How did you know about the comet? I've known for a while. How about you? I just found out recently. Looking back, it seems obvious now. I'm not sure how you figured it out. There's so many damn clues for it. I mean, how could a completely different independent civilization speak the same language as us? And what was this supposed to be? An alternate reality? No, it was just a different time. When was there ever anything resembling these creatures on Earth? It's not hard to make the jump from dragons to dinosaurs when some of them here look pretty damn near identical to dinosaurs that we know about. And then there's also the prehistoric fruits, the plants, and the fact that their technological level is nearly at the same level as our own past society. But we don't even have to think that abstract, just look at the sky. The sun, the moon, even the stars are the same. Constellations change over time, of course. But you know, we could just account for that stuff. You could have just pointed your PDA at the sky and would have told you the time period, including the imminent threat of being eradicated. You could even see the meteorite in the sky and how it would change its position day after day. Okay, you done being condescending? I guess so. You killed the dragons, mate. What a brilliant deduction, Sherlock. <laughs> okay, so why did you do that? Do you really need me to spill it out? I thought better of you. After I found out the truth about this place, I just knew waiting for the generators we were owed was not an option anymore. It would have taken who knows how long, but I didn't intend to stay a day longer than necessary. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to acquire some generators. Some of the dragons didn't go down easy. Who cares that they got back the generators I stole? With just this one, we won't need any of the others. Okay, why are you doing this, you punk? How could I do it? Let me ask you this. What harm is there in taking the generators when the whole civilization will be gone in just a few weeks anyway? The ones I killed just died a little earlier than scheduled. Even if that creep hadn't shown up and interrupted our meeting, we wouldn't have had the time for them to make the generators for us. Okay, how about we don't let them all die? They ain't going to be extinct anytime soon, if that's what you're concerned about. I paid the hatchery another visit before I came here. With the right persuasion, I think we'll have plenty of reasons to keep at least some of them around. Bodyguards, border patrols, weapons, even as pets or companions, as long as we make the necessary changes. Yeah, I found your stash of eggs. See, it's not as bad as you might think. I'm not going to just abandon them like that, only for their whole civilization to be wiped out. Get your priorities straight. Next you'd rather starve, because you suddenly empathise with a steak. And you're not satisfied just starving by yourself? No, you're going to let all of us starve, because you want to impose your morals on everyone else. Since when do you think you get to have any say in this? You know why you're here. What you're proposing is treason, and you know the consequences of this. Personally, I don't mind if you want to stay here. You know I don't care about corporal punishment. Just let me through, and you can do what you want. No can do, buddy old pal. I see how it is. They told you they need the generator to stop the comet, haven't they? You've become their lackey. Don't tell you you've been drinking up all they've been telling you. You know they have as much of a vested interest in this whole thing as humanity does, that I or you do, or at least used to. Do you think they wouldn't do the same thing if it was their families on the line instead of ours? Yeah, but their entire world is on the line. They live in perfect harmony with the perfect green energy source and no reason for wars or conflicts, yada yada yada. We had that too, and you know what happened then? Of course you do. This is such an idiotic trope, you know. Random person meets weird natives, learns their ways, and then ends up saving them. What do they need you for? Maybe they're going to be extinct for a reason, if they can't even save themselves. You know of our suffering, yet we'll let them have it. I don't give a shit, <laughs> unlike you. I was at least trying to save humanity, at any cost. We have the solution right here, and you want to get philosophical now? Don't you think we deserve it? They've had it for who knows how long. Now it's our turn. Not like this, bro. Do you think I like it? If there was a different way, I wouldn't have spent the last few weeks doing what you didn't. We don't live in a fairy tale world of yours where there's a perfect solution to everything. You should know that. Just being here a few weeks must have messed you up. I think I know why. You got too used to all the comforts they have here. You actually don't care if they die back home, do you? As soon as you get to stay here, in this perfect little world of yours, you've discarded everything and everyone back home and replaced it with this. Maybe it's because you don't have a life back home. I can even understand that a little. Of course it would be nice to just stay here where they have everything that we don't, but being here also reminded me of everything I hated about our world as it used to be. 
the pettiness and the politics, say about the solar flare what you want, but it levelled the playing field and gave people a chance like us to make a difference. For all of our efforts, what did we get? A vote that was meaningless in a sea of stupidity and liars. Now everyone has to pull their own weight, we make the rules. You, of all people, should understand. Of course they wouldn't. They haven't experienced it how it is. What it is to live like we do now? To see the whole world burn? Then everyone around you die. And because I have, I won't let the same thing happen to them. How many do you think died back home just in the two weeks you've been here because we don't have the power for the hospital? Do you think those victims aren't worth mentioning? Or do you just care about the few dragons that I killed? Our city is the last bastion of a civilised society in a world where nothing else is left. Maybe you've forgotten about them, but I haven't. How many of us do you think will be there in a month or a year? Or are they just a statistic to you? Could say the same for the dragons. What do you want to do? Talk me down from this? Then what? It's too late. You think they're just going to let us go after what I've done? No chance. Whatever you may think, you'll find that our leaders back home agree with my course of action. Okay, so why are you telling me about that? I expect you to join me. Not going to happen. And you call yourself an ambassador? This generator is the only thing we need for our city to survive. How can you even argue about this? Dragons also need that generator, and I'll do what's necessary to stop you if I have to. Okay, that makes you a judge, jury, and executioner. Your morals are great there. You've only got to wait until the comet has passed by. You think you can stop the comet, and you need the generator to do that? Sure, and if your plan fails, not only is this world gone, we also lose any and all hope to save our own. We're so close. We can't risk anything by waiting for your crazy plan when back home there are people dying by the minute. I won't let you. You only want to save your own two-faced hide because you don't want to face the consequences of what you did. Oh, Crazy laughter, man. Why are you laughing? It's a joke. Must be. I've got the gun. And you thought you could just walk in here and lecture me about it. Listening to you is fun and all, but the grown-ups must get back to work now. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't stop me. But maybe I can. It's Maverick. Maverick and Loren appeared next to me. Yeah, uh, you planned this, didn't you? Maybe. <laughs> and to think I let you distract me with such a cheap trick, just because I thought there was still a shred of humanity left within you. Oh, it comes the gun. He pulled out a gun. Not sure which one of us he should be aiming at. Just let me go, and I'll forget this ever happened. You got six bullets for three people. Can you do that? Is it worth risking your life for? I've been risking my life every day for the last two weeks. What do you do? Sip champagne in your nice apartment? Besides, this generator and the whole building came from our time. They belong to humanity. Suddenly, the administrator came out of the shadows in the hallway behind Reza. Here she is. Confused, Reza spun around, aiming his gun at the newcomer who was slowly walking toward him. Who the fuck are you? Freeze. Wanna waste your bullets on me? Feel free. Can't stop everyone. He does a quite a good job with his gun. Oh shit, you got shot. He pulled the trigger. The administrator fell to the ground with a dull thud that knocked her mask off. Yeah, she's always getting shot this one in these endings. <laughs> okay, my first instinct was to run away. But as Maverick and Narem started charging, so did Aya. Here we go. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Reza was quick with his aim and shot at Maverick until he went down. Don't, don't shoot Lorem! <laughs> oh shit! Lorem took flight with a few beats of their wings and was about to collide with Reza, but at the last moment Reza got out of the way and hit him with a well-aimed kick. He got booted. He's not very big, is he? Oh man, in an instant Reza was aiming at me. I quickly dove behind the box of the generator for cover, just before he pulled the trigger. While I was unharmed, a loud hiss suddenly started emanating from the box. I knew what was going to happen and quickly started running toward the exit. Everybody out. Just as I reached outside, the explosion battered my ears. The shockwave sent me flying briefly before I roughly collided with the ground. My vision blurred instantly and all control left my body as I slowly closed my eyes. I've blacked out. What happened? Oh shit. I awoke to the sight of Reza aiming his gun at me. What the heck did you do to the portal? What are you talking about? I didn't do a thing. <laughs> Why can't I use it? What happened to the coordinates? The dragons don't know that much about the portal, so it must have been you or that girl. 
You better give me something, or else I have no reason to let you live. It was her. Who is she? I don't know. They must have sent her through after you. The only question is why. You were the one who suddenly vanished. Maybe that's why they sent her. I had my plan, and humanity was fine with it. You must have told them something that changed their minds. I haven't been in contact with them since the day I arrived. I've got nothing to do with her. I just wanted a diplomatic solution. That was the fucking plan. You weren't supposed to know anything about what I was doing. <laughs> if humanity knew, why would they send her then? That's what I've been asking myself. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really matter anyway. She's the only one who knows how to use the portal again. And now that you've killed her, we're both stuck here. Well done. You got something to do with this. Or else you would be so fucking smug about it. <laughs> no, I just like seeing you fail. Stop denying it. You're going to fix this right now. Or I'll find ways to make you talk. Nothing you can do or say will change what's coming now. What's that? Turn around. Reza glanced back over his shoulder, just in time to see Maverick running towards him. He turned around, aiming his gun at Maverick's direction. Before he could fire, I grabbed his hand in an attempt to disarm him. But in the scuffle, a shot went off, and I suddenly found myself in a world of pain. I collapsed to the ground, still holding the gun. Maverick got him, though. <laughs> Maverick pounced and pinned Reza to the ground with all his weight. Okay, what are you going to do now, Reza? Not so strong anymore without your weapon. The voices faded as I watched the sky. Oh, it's all turning red. This isn't good. My vision turned red, making it look as if the stars were bathed in a sea of blood. I resigned to my fate as I closed my eyes. Oh, I don't want to die. <laughs> Reza was apprehended and taken to jail. As communication between our worlds was no longer possible, humanity never learned of our fate in this timeline. They had decided that if our visit did not yield any results, they would no longer try their luck with the portal, and instead use their remaining energy to hold on as long as they still could. It was an uphill battle that was eventually lost when the city ran out of resources and fell. Rosa warned the dragons of the comet and its danger, but without the generators from the underground building, their plan to redirect it ultimately failed. Oh! <laughs> That was the end of the world. Was that that was bad? That that was that wasn't good at all. <laughs> okay, so that was one of Lorem's endings. That was a bit of a downer, but Sebastian didn't get killed, so that was that was a bonus. And this is Ushio signing off, and hopefully I'll see you next time.